Good morning and welcome. Well, it's finally here. Yes, and you've been looking forward to it too. The season has come to an end, and it's Super Bowl Sunday. Two football teams who defeated all or most all of their opponents now gather in Tampa Bay, Florida for the ultimate in prizes, the championship title, the trophy, the ring. In 2012, Indianapolis hosted the Super Bowl, and the city went all out. With each Super Bowl, something called the NFL Experience rolled into town, and opportunities to volunteer and be part of the experience were offered. A preacher in the church I was serving, and a volunteer, invited me to see the festivities going on at the convention center in downtown Indy. There was so much to see, so much to do, and, and so much you could do. It was just awesome. And masses of people were there too. Young mothers with babies and strollers, all the way up to older people, attended every event. There was something there for everyone. History and memorabilia from past Super Bowls, the Vince Lombardi Trophy with a video that showed how it was made, and Super Bowl rings from every year that we could stand and ogle. Practice fields were all over the place. You could see how far you could throw a football, see how accurate you were, kick a field goal, and run your fastest time. Mostly kids and a lot of dads participating in that one. And then there was shopping in an enormous gift shop. Autographs by some of the Colts players, have your own face in a Doritos commercial. And that's, that's just on the inside of the convention center. Outside, a zip line was overhead. Huge NFL numbers on Monument Circle, a light show, the music, the people. And my parishioner turned to me and said, this is where it's happening. And there was something in the air, the spirit of everyone we encountered, a spirit of anticipation and joy. The excitement was building and contagious. The standard greeting, as I learned from those who were trained as volunteers, is, have a super day. Well, I tried to look up the word super in the Bible, but the closest I got was superfluous, meaning excessive and unnecessary, or superstition, which doesn't speak to where I want to go this morning. Writers in ancient times must have used another word to describe things that were super or superior, but not in their writings. Like the shepherds on the hillside meeting the angels who tell them where the Christ child was born. The shepherds exclaim, they shout with joy, words to the effect of super. Well, not only were the events in downtown Indy awesome, but all the planning that went into them. Because peppered throughout all the area were places to eat. Even a super event, the food needs planning too. Food and fun naturally go together. Food is a gift of life. It nourishes the body, gives us the energy we need, and can be very satisfying. I mean, think about it. What is the most, your most favorite comfort food? What brings a sense of happiness to you when life is full of stress or hard? And I don't mean that in the wrong sense. Food can be healing. And we are inundated with healthy choices now. And there are still the decadent and indulgent choices too. It's fairly standard that after breakfast to begin thinking about lunch. And at some point ask, what's for dinner? Food is an integral part of life. Scripture is filled with all kinds of references to banquets and feasts and eating. In early times, there was generally just two meals a day. Breakfast, a light meal in the beginning of the day, and supper, a heavier meal in the evening when the air was cooler. Early Jewish people sat on the floor to eat and later sat or reclined on couches around a table. And as many of us today do, as, as many do today, a blessing or a short prayer is usually offered before the meal. And as we come to the table, 
we are reminded that Jesus blessed, prayed over the bread and the cup. We've talked about how eating and being invited to join one's table was an act of hospitality, an invitation to enter into friendship. Gathering around the table brings nourishment for the body, while the conversation brings nourishment to the soul, a place to open up and be real. Many of us know teenagers going through difficult times and how often they, they don't really want to talk about it with their parents. And so a friend of mine told me that when she wants to know what's going on in her teenage son's life, she takes him to a restaurant. That way he has to sit across from her and talk. The conversation over something to eat opens up the feelings and the words. Jesus often sat at the table with people to listen to their inner hearts. The story of Zacchaeus who said he'd pay back four times over anyone he cheated, came over a meal with Jesus. In Luke, the Pharisees and teachers of the religious law complained that Jesus was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. There were feasts and special occasions. The wedding in Cana where Jesus performed the first miracle might have been called a super feast. The party was going strong with food and wine to celebrate the joining of two families through marriage. And we celebrate that way too. Weddings and birthday parties, graduations, even funerals gather families and friends together for food and fellowship. And yes, how many Super Bowl parties will there be today? There's food, and then there's the food Jesus offers. When we look at today's scripture, what happens next in the story of the woman at the well? When the disciples got back from town to get food after the long journey through Samaria, they were distressed to find Jesus talking with a woman. And as soon as she leaves, the disciples encourage Jesus to eat. Eat something, they say. And Jesus responds with words that must have puzzled them. I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Of course, the disciples thought, so someone must have brought him something, but, but who? And they react and they respond to Jesus, the human. And Jesus shows them he's the Son of God. My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing God's work. Jesus' food is the will of God and doing the will of God, bringing people into the kingdom for eternal life. And it doesn't come from manna that the Israelites ate on the Exodus journey. And it doesn't come from flour, water, and salt all mixed together called bread. Salvation, eternal life, comes from doing the will of God. As United Methodists, our food is making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. How super is that? Jesus speaks of himself in a later verse. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And yes, I am the bread of life and living water, as he proclaimed to the woman at the well. Jesus feeds us in ways that nourish us and sustain us, far better than the food we eat, which makes us hungry later on. Jesus is spirit and life. And notice, too, the word super is one letter off from supper. Jesus came to the Last Supper to share in the meal with his disciples before his arrest and crucifixion. He knew what they did not. And in his final act at the table, he took bread and wine, blessed them, and told the disciples to repeat this act as often as they could in remembrance of him, the bread of life. Come to the table and be nourished in the spirit of Jesus. 
Receive the living water in the cup to cleanse and wash away our sin. And let this meal remind us again of all that Jesus did for us on the cross. It was something super, meaning greater or better than anything of its kind. And have a super day. Amen. <laughs>